meeting should be recorded now. So sorry about that. Um, great. So again, reminder just on general ground rules. Um, uh, just allow room for all. So first before second. So if you find yourself speaking up more frequently, uh, just, you know, just provide the space for others to weigh in and voice their opinions and also just encourage um, other student group members to talk and voice their opinion as well. So, and again, when agreeing, voice, avoid repeating what others said. Uh, when disagreeing, just be respectful and polite um, and try to utilize the raise hand function at all possible when we're um, diving into your discussion. So we do have a little bit of a lighter agenda today, um, as discussed um, a couple months back when we outlined the strategy of how to review the content with you guys. Uh, we talked about going with mobility, quality of life and economy, and then dedicating one of the months to just talk about engagement. Uh, so we know we talked about engagement uh, towards the fall and winter of last year. So we um, wanted to just kind of circle back with the group on a more detailed approach for this upcoming summer. Um, so we'll go ahead and talk about the uh, engagement approach, just a quick recap of what we discussed, um, a broader overview of the approach uh, from our consultant team. Um, and then just also a quick uh, update on the mobility section. Um, I know comments were provided uh, by, I think it was Valentine's Day on February 14th. So we've been uh, kind of incorporating feedback from there. So I just wanted to give a quick update on how that's looking and what you can expect from the other sections. Um, and then we'll conclude the meeting with public comment and questions at the end. Great. Um, so just a quick timeline again of where uh, we're at um, and where we've been. Um, started, kicked off the process in July of 2021. Uh, and now we're finally getting close to the release of the public review draft, which will happen um, in about in early June, uh, in early June of this year. So um, we're hoping to get the plan uh, adopted by the end of uh, this year um, as we go through uh, the public review process. So for a just quick recap of what we discussed before I turn it over to our consultant team. Um, as you remember, uh, we had a meeting about um, outreach, um, about adjustments for the draft plan phase. So this is just a slide from that specific meeting in October. Uh, we talked about hosting kind of one large meeting. So our meetings have been lightly attended in the past before. Um, so just kind of spending and dedicating our resources to one larger meeting so that we can be more out and about in the community during the summer, going to more of the pre-existing meetings and events, um, including RNOs and pop-ups. Um, and also just continue to uh, leverage the online resources that we have. Uh, people have been weighing in online more frequently. So to be able to have the opportunity to just interact online in an easier way um, and to be able to comment on a plan in an easier way. So other, um, I, I did just want to know about the other ideas we discussed uh, coming from that meeting that we uh, kind of, uh, we outlined in our No, December. go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I think someone's not mute. Sorry, I'll mute you real quick, Renee. Sorry. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so uh, some of the other ideas we discuss in our in-person Dece December steering committee meeting that we've um, kind of incorporated throughout uh, the next several months um, included, uh, you know, making use of R and O meetings in the future. So. We'll make sure to do that and coordinate as part of the draft plan phase uh, before and after release of the draft plan. And that's actually one of the discussion questions we have for you today. Um, opportunity to involve steering members outside of meetings to help with outreach. Um, so some of you guys have expressed interest in potentially helping out and doing more um, in terms of getting more people involved. So thank you for those that filled out the poll um, and having a follow-up conversation about with me about what that looks like. Um, improving messaging, uh, we've tried to uh, just be a little bit more streamlined, concise in terms of uh, messaging with our flyers and e-blast. Um, and the fourth one, um, live streaming the steering committee meetings and making them feel a little bit more approachable. Um, so we were able to kind of do that uh, by just, uh, you know, every month uh, sending out an e-blast to uh, the general uh, general kind of public and uh, inviting them to attend and observe and comment at the end of the meeting. So 
Um, and we and one idea that we weren't able to incorporate was making the steering committee larger at this time, um, just because of the pro, uh, of where we're at in the process and so much history and conversations that have been had. Uh, but it is something we are considering for future neighborhood planning efforts um, in, in for the next uh, kind of uh, the phase of neighborhood planning um, in our department. So again, the next steps was just discussing the outreach strategy in greater detail with you guys here today. Um, and then with that, I'll pass it over to uh, Puma, uh, specifically Naomi. Great, thanks so much, Sun. Uh, so awesome to see you all. I am going to be uh, managing the outreach strategy for the draft plan this summer. I'm super excited. Uh, so I'll share a little bit about what we've what we put together. Um, go through sort of the elements of it, the timeline. I'll pause after the timeline for questions, um, and we'll go in a little bit more in depth and pause again for some questions and feedback uh, after that. So as Sung mentioned, we're really focusing on meeting people where they're at. Um, so having the team go out to events that are scheduled, doing intercept interviews, utilizing the promotoras, um, having office hours in the community. We're also really focusing on that one large, what we're calling added value, <laughs> value added launch event um, and resource fair. And I'll show you uh, some ideas that we've come up with uh, for that in a little bit later. So really gathering energy at the beginning, um, right after the plan goes live um, and really focusing that uh, the, the value added element being, you know, as much of an attraction as we can to get people, get people excited, um, and also have some of the other organizations and departments in the city that are going to be part of implementing a plan. Um, as we've discussed in these meetings, uh, there's going to be lots of partnerships and different people involved. So in addition to the resources um, that they can offer people right now, um, I think it'll be, it'll be fun to have them present as we start to discuss the plan draft with the community. Uh, there will also be surveys um, and feedback gathering, and we're thinking about this strategically at sort of two levels. So uh, first, there will be people that will read the entire plan. Um, uh, there'll be feedback be able to be gathered via Conveo uh, online, and also we're going to definitely make some uh, in-person uh, physical copies available at some key locations by request, um, don't want to leave out people that would prefer to review a physical copy and actually just speak with someone about it. So at a higher level, um, for both gathering feedback at events, including the launch event, and doing the intercept interviews, we're going to be developing um, a, a more of an intercept survey that goes over some of the most important concepts and maps. Um, and we really want to hit on three kind of major themes. So did we, A, in this plan, in the draft plan, address the major issues and needs that we heard from the community. Uh, two, is there anything that you see that's glaringly you disagree with? Um, and three, I uh, wanted to add in some, some thoughts about prioritization, because um, we heard that from the steering committee as well. Um, so this would be less granular, um, not so much I want the specific recommendation done first, but more category-wise. Um, and so we're going to be working on that. Um, and I think that that'll be uh, a really interesting piece of feedback to get from the community. Next slide, please. So we're dividing the summer into two sort of stages. Uh, the first one will kick off uh, with mailers and getting uh, getting the word out there in May um, and really leading up to the June event. So the June launch event is going to be uh, likely June 21st or 22nd. We're still trying to lock that down um, as well as the venue. Uh, but the first half of engagement will be really as much as we can driving people to the event and of course announcing that the, the plan is live uh, and available for community review. Uh, so we'll start sending uh, save the dates. We'll start interacting with um, newsletters in May, um, especially as soon as we confirm uh, the launch dates. Uh, we'll be doing and add on North Star again, we'll be uh, developing flyers, uh, mailers, newsletter, again, newsletter postings, uh, and yard signs, um, kind of all the stuff that, that we've seen before that has worked really great. Um, the plan is probably going to go live early June, as Sung mentioned. And also, um, I'll talk about the promotors on their own slide in a bit too, but this is going to be one 
main outreach uh, instance for the promotoras. Um, and again, their outreach is going to be primarily helping uh, get people to the launch event um, and making them aware of the plan. Um, then we'll have the event. Stage two, um, sort of after the event, uh, through July and then into August until at some point in August, uh, we close the, the review of the draft officially. Um, and this will be the opportunity for revisiting our focus groups. So we'll go back to Quig, we'll go back to the uh, industrial group, we'll go back to business owners, um, and we'll really focus on gathering a list of any events that we can go to uh, strategically throughout the summer that are happening already. Again, meeting people where they're already going to be this summer. Um, also, we know that there will be meetings that um, the team gets invited to to present at. Um, that would include RNO meetings or other specific meetings. Um, we'll strategize about that. And there'll be a second round of Promotora outreach. Uh, again, getting more focus on the intercept interviews, um, getting that, high, that feedback um, from the community on the plan. Next slide. Uh, so this is basically the same information, but uh, in timeline form. So uh, again, that kind of first phase plan plan gets launched, launch event lead up to that. And then July uh, and through August, uh, the rest of the engagement, again, putting together a list of events that we can go to, take advantage of people being out and about, um, and closing the survey um, at some point in August. So I will pause here really fast uh, for any questions about kind of the overall strategy and the timing. Naomi, I, uh, there are a few chats here, so I can just quickly. I have a question. Yes. Um, can I come to your launch event that's happening in June or in the summer? Yes, of course. Um, we'll have more details following up um, online. So if you're signed up on our newsletter, um, you will get that. Um, if you're not, if you're not sure if you're signed up for our newsletter, um, happy, I'm happy to take your email and, and place it in myself. Can you send me information in the mail? Yes, we'll have mailers. So you want my home address? Um, uh, not specifically yours, but we do have an inventory of all the addresses in the plan area. Okay, that's you on my email address? Yeah, feel free to drop that in the chat. Okay. Yes. All right, thank you. Um, so yeah, yeah some, see. some questions, Naomi, here about venue ideas. Um, yep. We are looking into um, a variety of venues. Uh, we would prefer to try to have it at Denver North. We ran into a few constraints right now in terms of timing. Um, so uh, ideally, it would be at a, a school facility. Um, if not, we're thinking at um, kind of one of the rec centers potentially, but um, we're really banking on um, having, a, having it at a DPS facility like North. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yep, then, north to Ashton's point would be very would be very centrally located um, and easy to get to as, as one event for all four neighborhoods. Right. And then for, um, will you do Facebook and Insta formatted posts? Um, I don't think so. I don't necessarily how, know how that would work without us having an account, but maybe Tripti, you could speak to that a little bit more. Sure. Uh, it's just easy when information comes formatted in a way that you could easily put into these other places. When you attach large PDFs, PDFs are not something you can add onto Facebook or Instagram. So um, I think it's easy enough to do. It's just if you know if it's not done, then those platforms may just be missed. I, I think so. Again, it easy make it easy for us to to share this information uh, on those two platforms. Got it. Yeah, we'll yeah. definitely be mindful of that um, as we design the material. Thank you. Awesome. A anybody yeah. else? All right. There's more to cover, so we can move on. Um, all right. Next slide. Thank you. Um, so just a little bit more about the the promotoras um, to to rewind to the the previous phases that they've helped with. Um, they've spent an incredible amount of time in the community uh, and really going to meet 
people where they're at. They did uh, in the previous phases, 347, uh, they got 347 survey responses for us and did about um, 144 kind of more conversation interviews uh, with people. And this gave a lot of really good information um, that we wouldn't have gotten otherwise. So this is some of the reasons we really wanna utilize them and kind of build off of the success of last time. Um, so for example, they were incredibly helpful um, at hearing from population that we're, we don't normally hear from. Traditional engagement was 71% white, 81% homeowners versus the focus engagement that they did um, was 69% Hispanic, Latinx, um, and mostly renters as well. Uh, we also uh, know that they were pretty effective at reaching Chaffee Park. Um, so as part of the strategy that I mentioned for going to events over the summer, we know that Chaffee Park, uh, for example, doesn't have as many businesses and doesn't have as many events possibly. So we want to make sure that we're being equitable with outreach to Chaffee Park. Um, and the promotoras were a very successful way to do that. 30% um, of the respondents that they reached actually were in Chaffee Park neighborhood. Um, they also were able to bring up issues that didn't come up in the traditional engagement, um, such as the importance of a sense of cultural belonging, um, activities for, for elders, uh, youth programs after school, and uh, barriers to food access. So just a, just a reminder of the work that they had done in the previous phases. Next slide. So for this phase, um, we're going to be working with them again. We've already had a kickoff call uh, with them, and they're excited to, to get going um, and build upon the success that they um, that they had last time, as well as the, the sort of strategies that they, they learned from doing it before. Uh, continue to focus on Chaffee Park, as I mentioned. Um, they'll be instrumental in helping promote the launch event. Um, they'll be at the launch event, helping people navigate the various resources um, and the plan. Um, and then we'll also have them um, at other events throughout the summer that uh, may attract more people who would prefer to communicate in Spanish um, uh, or where uh, they would be particularly helpful. Thanks. So a little bit more about what we're thinking for the launch event. Um, we've been brainstorming and already reaching out to some different uh, departments as well as community organizations that provide services and programs to people now um, that the community, I think all, all sorts of people from the community would be interested in. So this is a list uh, of, of the organizations that we've come up with and we're gonna reach out to or already have and sort of my rough ideas of the sort of the value added, as we mentioned. Um, so these again relate to uh, a lot of the recommendations that are in the plan. Um, and so I've been talking to them as I reached out to them. So for example, um, we've got confirmation from the parks people, Denver Digs Trees, they're gonna come. Um, and you know, uh, I've talked about how some of the recommendations are starting to, to shape up. There'll be uh, things about sustainability in parks and trees. And so um, the attendees uh, that in having tables there will kind of be aware, of course, they're going to be talking about their programs and connecting with people. But uh, again, I think it's exciting to have all these partners here as we start to introduce the plan to the community. Um, all right. We could pause here for a bit of questions um, about any of the Promotora uh, strategy that I talked about or some questions about the launch event or other ideas for organizations people might uh, think would be great for us to reach out to. And I see in the chat, oh, uh, thanks, Bill. So logistical question, we're looking, the 21st or the 22nd of June is either a Wednesday or a Thursday. Um, and we're looking at an evening, um, probably a, a period of about three hours um, as the previous open houses have been, which gives people a chance to sort of come in before dinner, after work, after dinner, um, come in at their leisure um, and be able to access the resource fair. Tripti? Yeah, hi. Uh, on the promotoras, mm -hmm. and maybe even more specific to Sunnyside and a challenge we always see is really getting to a certain group of people, the, the folks who may not be online, may not you know use email as much. So are the Promotoras being used also to really hit senior and, and a population that isn't, you know, online and, and virtual uh, platforms as much throughout all of the four areas? 
Yeah, that's a good question. I might kick that over to uh, to Brad or yeah. Sung. Yeah. Yeah, I can take the first stab at it. And they did that in phase two. We actually mapped uh, different sub areas in all four neighborhoods that had high concentrations of apartments or senior living facilities, those types of things. So we mapped that, we still have the same map and, and they were really helpful to penetrate some of those areas. Awesome. Uh, yeah, thanks on the launch event. I love the idea about having some of the other organizations uh, present. Uh, Sung just sent me some information um, that the city is looking at um, updating the residential parking permit program. And uh, I didn't realize that this apparently has been going on for maybe almost a year. And they're going to be asking for public comment next month. And I don't know um, how many people on this call are from Jefferson Park. I know Ashton, you live uh, close by me. But, um, you know, the city apparently is is finally taking a look at like the A permits and trying to update that program. And I think that's kind of a huge piece of or it should be a piece of the Northwest near Northwest plan. Right. Um, yeah. And I can invite him to the open house. Sorry, I was responding in the chat, uh, but I think I caught the last bit of that. Um, yeah, we, we are. We've been coordinating with Scott directly on the curbside kind of recommendations, um, as you guys saw uh, for the Jefferson Park neighborhood. Um, from my understanding, and I can get Scott to clarify this in the email, Mike, uh, for more detail, is that the rules and regs are being updated and uh, from that they'll develop some kind of typology for the neighborhoods that it would apply to um and so I, I think the yeah the rules and regs are to be updated and how it's applied in the neighborhood will be a conversation that they'll be having with the neighborhoods themselves um but if you are if you want to provide specific feedback on the details of the regulations I think um, uh, Scott would be the best person right now as they're currently drafting that. Um, does that make sense, Mike? Yeah, thank you for that. And I'm just gonna jump in real quick. Um, so they are doing a curbside area plan, access plan. They change the name all the time for the Highland neighborhood right now. So Mike, that has been a process that's been going on for months. and that draft plan is getting ready to be released, then they're gonna start working on Jefferson Park. But there have been a ton of internal conversations about the stadium area, but they kind of go area by area. We were doing Tennyson Street area like a year and a half ago. Um, so Scott is, Scott is the guy who handles all the curbside access plans. Um, and Gina, do you, do you know when they plan to start on looking at the Jefferson Park neighborhood relative to, to that um, curbside action plan? I don't know for sure if it's going to be the end of this year or the beginning of next year, because they will have to finish Highland first. And that draft plan is going to be coming out soon. And then everybody will opine on that. Then they will implement. And then, you know, tweaking happens if necessary but I know it is up next and top of mind. Okay, but I just you. didn't want you to think that there's been a whole conversation and you're going to see a draft plan in a few months on Jefferson Park. Yeah, although I do, the thing that Sung sent me, there is a public hearing on Friday, May 5th to look at um, a, some kind of a draft recommendation and the website just says that the, uh, draft will be posted soon. So, I mean, I just, I'm, I've signed up to testify or provide testimony at that particular um, meeting. It's just that there's not really any document to react to and it's, you know, a month away. So anyway. Yeah, but you and I can talk offline and figure out what's going on. Thanks. Um, there are a couple of questions in the chat. Um, maybe Rebecca, if you want to go um, and then I can address some of the chat yeah i just had a question um how are they going to allow 
public interest uh, and uh, input in the street plan. In, in the what? Sorry, uh, Ron, the, the, the curb, the street plan, the park, oh. parking plan. Are, are you speaking to what Mike is speaking to just now? Yes. Okay. Um, I will, uh, well, so I sent Scott an email with the questions, um, but I will kind of reply to that email and, and ask if there are um, um, additional kind of uh, standards or considering for ADA or not. Um, I, I personally don't know right now. And Tim, you have your hand up. Is that a follow-up to that? It is. Okay. Um, so this is in the eastern half of Pineland from Zunai to the east. Um, and the notification is being mailed out uh, to everybody, every uh, property in that half of the neighborhood. So there, there should be pretty good notification. Okay. Thank you. Great. Um, some, uh, some great suggestions in, in the chat. Thanks so much. Um, Frank, for uh, for your your offer for the Denver Park Trust, that's fantastic. We'll reach out um, in the Greenway Foundation. Definitely, lots of awesome organizations we can bring um, to Bill's question about do we want to limit it? Um, I think we're we're limited possibly by capacity. <laughs> um, so I I having I'd say in terms of of reaching out. Um, ideas are always welcome. Uh, we know that there's always a possibility we reach out to some of these organizations and they just can't make it. So having a, a nice robust list uh, and of course is a great draw for people to come to their launch event. Um, I think we'll just have to evaluate if you know we get 40 organizations that might be a bit much with tables and, and things like that. But I'd say throw, throw ideas out there now. Um, so that's great. Uh, and food, yes, there will be food. Uh, we're not quite sure. Um, it will be, you know, not just snacks. Um, but in the past, the the tamales provided have been uh, quite filling. <laughs> um, but we'll we'll evaluate that with with the budget. Um, and yes, food is a huge draw. Um, we really want to make it again a, a fun, family friendly event. Um, food, excitement, resources, uh, really things to get people there. And let's see other questions. Um, regarding engagement fatigue, yes, yes, Troop D, and I think this is one of the reasons that we're we're reaching out to these um, uh, other departments. Uh, for example, it, it's just there. There's a lot of coordination that does go on um, with them as well. But there's an opportunity to learn about other programs um, and events that you know, for example, Dottie might be holding and just to make sure that we're not competing with <laughs> what they might be holding over over the summer um, and also possibly to just join forces if there are things that they were planning to do as well. Um, Your first home. Let's see. Federal bid. Thank you, Leslie. I will reach out to you. Awesome. Yes. All right. Sure. All right. So um, any other last questions on this? We're going to just move on to some of the other places where we would love input from the group. Um, so we're starting lists of uh, and data gathering for events that are happening in the summer. Um, we're going to be, you know, working on what permits have been pulled for parks, um, just trying to get a sense of what is going on this summer um, and which ones we want to go to. This is just a, a bit of a brain dump, and we really welcome um, and hope that. Uh, you'll help us kind of identify some awesome events that we can go to. So uh, also in addition, the locations for this sort of office hours idea where uh, staff will go and be available uh, at places throughout the community to answer questions, um, to go over the plan, a kind of an informal way to interact with the community. Um, the rec centers are obviously fantastic places for that. Um, the council district uh, one office has, has offered to also do some office hours and outreach. Um, and then of course, some local coffee shops that uh, have been engaged in the past. We really wanna focus on visibility as well, um, making sure that uh, people know that we're there and that you know maybe you don't necessarily have to go in and feel like you need to buy a coffee, um, but you can in, in just engage with someone and ask the questions about the plan. 
um, on your own time. Uh, so I'll pause here just again for, for any other ideas if we want to, you can throw those in the chat um, or speak up, ask questions about this. Yeah. And uh, uh, how many people are coming? Um, hopefully a lot. Hopefully a lot. Yeah. We don't know yet, but <laughs> we're hoping it'll be a good old party. Uh, so uh yeah yes. so yeah for for those that have specific things that are going on um rebecca you mentioned the highland fourth of july event things like that it would be super helpful to know just kind of feel free to speak up or put in the chat or just email us kind of in the next couple of weeks or so that um now we started an internal calendar for the planning team so we're starting to fill those up um so that we can be at all of these uh, events in addition to some of the kind of pop-ups that um, we're planning to do outside of those. All right, federal bid, awesome, thanks so much. Sunny said, Jasmine Park is not happening. All right, good to know, uh, but barbecue, fabulous. All right, so yeah, as, as Sunny said, feel free to keep throwing these out, um, email us as, as you learn about them or as they come to you. All right, son, you're going to take this one. Yeah, sounds good. Um, and again, going back to the uh, kind of what we've heard in October and December, you know, one of the ideas was the idea of RNO engagement. Um, I, I know I've already coordinated with a couple of the RNOs on their annual meetings that are happening in April, just to kind of be a presence and point to the fact that we're going to have this bigger launch during the summer. Um, but another kind of question for uh, those that are involved with RNOs is after. Uh, the release of the draft plan. So I'm happy to kind of come to the meetings and promote the meeting. But after the draft plan is out there, um, you know, what would be the best way to engage with the RNO groups? Um, I know the they're configured uh, a little bit differently. Some have many subcommittees, some just have the general RNO group. Um, and so just wanted to ask what would be the most helpful and beneficial for you guys um, in terms of engagement? Tim's laughing over here, so I might I might call on him. <laughs> I was gonna say both. It's, you get different groups, uh, our organization at least. Okay, okay, sounds good. Um, yeah, because I'm I'm happy to come. Um, you know, talk about the plan, and if there are any specific topics that are something more important to the group, I'm happy to kind of have a conversation about that as well. So just keep that in mind that we're flexible. Um, in terms of how and when we might engage. So, great. Um, so, so, yeah. So, yeah, uh, Tim, thanks for letting me know. And then, Trupti, uh, looks like you said the monthly land use meeting on the second Thursday is a good spot. Um, so, come closer to that June, July, August date. Uh, we'll make sure to coordinate uh, so that we're on the agenda for all those things. Um, all right. Okay. And I know, uh, Rebecca, you kind of emailed me about that specific item just now about the um, the, the land use bill at the state, so I can cover that briefly at the end here, it's, um, and then we can wrap it up. Um, all right, so a uh, quick uh, update on the mobility. Um, so we're getting real close to incorporating all your guys' feedback. And thank you again uh, for the last couple of months for your time and commitment to reviewing this, uh, the material. Um, I know it's been a rigorous process in doing that. So hopefully this month uh, serves us a, a little break for that um, and just kind of be able to relax during springtime uh, before we jump back in with the housing and land use section next month. Um, so there were many cleanup uh, grammar spellings. Thank you for catching all those. Uh, we were able to do that uh, cleanup with you guys. Um, so uh, two really buckets of how um, we've been incorporating feedback. Uh, one of them has been refinements to existing ideas. So um, you know existing ideas that we're into plan and better clarifying or ad adding more detail on uh, some of those. And this is by far not an exhaustive list. Is you know, federal bridge crossings, um, talking more about protective barriers and improvements on, on and off ramps at federal, 
Um, there were comments about whether we should actually be pushing for a bike facility on 32nd versus looking at uh, an adjacent uh, street for 30, 33rd and 32nd. Um, so just general refinements to some of the existing ideas we've had based on your feedback. Um, we've also been able to identify some gaps and include new ideas. So um, there's um, kind of a comment about having more information on how plan uh, how our plans um, address ADA um, and making sure that you know we're uh, being accommodating for every kind of population, whether they're young um, or, or able bodies or not able bodies. Um, and then uh, a bus line to connect uh, Chaffee Park and Globeville. Um, that was a recommendation we're able to incorporate. Um, and then some additional shared use paths. Um, so uh, some of you guys were able to kind of dig into the details of the map and identify gaps within our mobility network uh, that we've recommended. So we're able to kind of cover those details as well. Um, so again, just a snippet of what we've uh, incorporated and heard. Um, we are keeping all these edits in a spreadsheet. Um, so I'm happy to share that once all the comments have been addressed uh, for you to kind of see how, uh, where your comments fit in. Um, so we're hoping to do a similar process with the quality of life section and housing and land use. Um, and by then you guys should have reviewed um, 80% of the material um, and uh, should be in good shape for the public review draft. Um, and then after we get into the public review draft, uh, we'll, we'll do a similar process where we'll have the uh, comments, uh, the public review draft available. People can directly comment and convey, uh, fill out the surveys that Naomi was talking about, but we'll go, be going through the process of looking at every detailed comment and making sure that uh, we're responding uh, to them. So that's actually um, it for today. Uh, we again, we just wanted to mainly go over the engagement strategy um, and provide a quick update uh, before we dive into the housing and land use section next week. Um, and Rebecca did uh, email me asking, you know, how the uh, the governor's bill might potentially impact um, our work. So for those of you that may not be aware, uh, there's been a bill proposed to uh, kind of require uh, 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 municipalities to uh, revise their zoning code to accommodate for a few, for a variety of different things, which uh, touches on uh, some of the missing middle housing conversations we've had as a group. Um, so we as a city are still kind of understanding and processing that, that if it were to pass what it means for our neighborhood planning process. So I can provide a more detailed update next month. Uh, but I think, you know, at a high level, what I can personally share is that uh, at the end of the day, the neighborhood planning process is an opportunity to identify values that we want to uphold and, and move forward as we think about housing and land use policy. So um, I think, you know, even if there was a citywide up, that, uh, update that, uh, that would be mandated from the state, um, you know, we would take a carefully look at the neighborhood plan uh, to see, you know, uh, how how we aim to balance preservation, housing, and design, and all of that. So um, definitely, I think uh, that's kind of what I can share for, for now. But again, um, it is a conversation that our leadership is having, and I'll have more to share um, next month in the context of our housing and land use discussion. Uh, Leslie said, what is the bill number in the state house? Um, does anybody know offhand? I, I think I actually had the link up. It's uh, SB2, oh, I'll type it in. Great. Um, Tripti, did you have your hand up? Uh, yes, um, this may be a more of a general question and maybe we're doing this all along, but I, I don't know if it might be worth either a presentation or a portion of a meeting in the future is, you know, this is an opportunity to correct Blueprint Denver or to modify Blueprint Denver or enhance Blueprint Denver. You know, I, I don't know if, about other folks, but, you know, is that something that we're kind of thinking about is, you know, where what we're coming up with now looks different than Blueprint Denver? And, and should we have a conversation up specifically about how what we're doing now is in contrast to Blueprint Denver and maybe where it should be 
So just maybe open it up to just that conversation of how are we modifying or updating Blueprint Denver through this process? Right, and and we'll provide more specifics on that specifically, Troop D, because um, the neighborhood planning process is an opportunity to update Blueprint Denver in terms of the future places and how we speak to the different parts of the neighborhood from a land use perspective. Um, so I think we had an earlier meeting in July, August that kind of outlined some kind of high level bullets and recommendations we're considering. So next month uh, we'll be digging into the details similar to what we've done for the, the mobility and uh, quality of life section. So um, that, that's a good segue for next month, um, but something important to be thinking about for everybody. Thank you. Great. Um, okay. Um, so just in terms of key next steps, again, um, April 25th is the housing and land use section. So uh, we'll go through the same process of uh, sending you out draft material um, a week ahead of time, um, along with some key questions that our planning group is still wrestling with and wants to have a discussion with the committee. Um, so we'll provide that uh, the week before um, have that conversation and open it up for a review period afterwards. Um, we are thinking about having one additional meeting to look at the full steering committee draft all together um, in the early week of May um, so that, you know, uh, there will be some new content that you haven't seen yet, including a more complete version of the neighborhood chapters, um, the introduction, uh, but in terms of substance for the different sections of the plan that we've been reviewing, mobility, quality of life, um, economy and land use and built form. That should be fairly um, uh, or mostly complete as, uh, with revisions from uh, you guys and everything you've provided. Um, so to be able to kind of celebrate that in person again early week of May and see the complete draft. Um, and then um, we'll have maybe another uh, another couple of weeks for additional comments and we're hoping to get it to a place where we can um, have it published online a week or two before the actual launch date. Um, so yeah, that's it. And then I'm looking at any questions here. Um, I just threw a last one up there, Song. Is Conveyo, Conveyo, sorry, saying that wrong, staying open the whole time in all these various sections for the steering committee members? I've actually been closing it during our three-week deadline just so that okay. I can have the ability to export. But if there is something that you caught and uh, maybe you didn't have a chance to respond to, feel free to just directly email me. Um, I'm happy to take the comments. It's just I, I need to kind of close it out and export the data at one point. But if you have specific feedback and uh, additional feedback, just let me know um, and I can kind of roll that into our spreadsheet. But it's the same tool that's going to be open for the public comment period when you actually release the draft so that we have yeah. another opportunity to um, that too. Weigh, weigh in. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And, and we're definitely not done here. Again, this is just a steering committee review draft. And once the public review draft is again, um, we'll identify kind of additional pinch points or topics that we discuss as a group um, based on uh, kind of your guys' thoughts. Okay, great. Um, well, with that, I'll leave maybe the last five to 10 minutes for public comment. Um, if you have any suggestions, feel free, uh, or if you are from the member of the public and would like to provide verbal uh, feedback, feel free to uh, raise your hand. Um, looks like I, I saw bingo, that, that would be a fun game to, <laughs> to play. Maybe it's a, like a planning bingo game. Um, That would be fun. Great. Um, I'm trying to see if any hands are raised here. Um, no? Okay. Okay. Um, okay, great. Well, if there are no additional comments from the public, uh, we can go ahead and close out the meeting. Um, Rebecca, I just saw your message. I'll email you. Um, all right. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.